we began our adventure on a voyage from the land of Russia to the promised land of Liberty City. At the beginning of our opening scene, we see a man beating a horribly disfigured woman for sexual gratification. Also during this scene, we get a glimpse of our protagonist throughout the game, the one, the only, rejected Spartan soldier, General Warts. General Warts has absolutely no time for bullshit, so he must carry on with his first mission of the entire game, taking his cousin to his luxurious mansion that is also a cockroach-infested apartment. As we drive through the land of Woody's in our big black banana to head to the luxurious mansion that is totally not a cockroach-infested apartment, we drive past the cab depot where we will be spending a lot of time in the near future. As we enter our luxurious mansion that is totally not a cockroach-infested apartment, we come to the realization that we have schizophrenia and that we are talking to no one and hearing voices. After having a completely normal one-sided conversation with ourselves in our luxurious mansion that is totally not a cockroach-infested apartment, we head outside of our totally not cockroach-infested apartment that is a luxurious mansion to go make our way down to the cab depot to start our journey. Upon leaving the luxurious mansion that is totally not a cockroach-infested apartment, we see a scene of Sonic with a jet engine strapped to his chest, slinging wieners to the unsuspecting public. I see no health code violations here, so I continue along my way to the cab depot. As we enter the cab offices, we see that our protagonist is having another episode and that there is also a Pokemon sleeping on the job. After being introduced to the sleeping Mewtwo by our imaginary friend, we are also introduced to my little traumatic back injury. And my little traumatic back injury does not like us at all, but that's okay because General Wartz has absolutely no time for bullshit and must take his imaginary friend to the gambling den where he will lose all of his imaginary money in an imaginary card game. We pull up to the gambling den, and as the camera pans closer and closer to our large black phallus-shaped vehicle, our imaginary friend hops out and gives us a phone and tells us to call if any loan sharks appear. As the Smurf and the Emo Pony approach, we call our imaginary friend to have him run out the back of the gambling den and enter the vehicle to be chased all the way back to the cab depot. As we transition into the next mission, we see that our imaginary friend is being harassed once again by the lone sharks, and this time one of them is very badly deformed. After our schizophrenic protagonist scares off the lone sharks, we must now venture off to the train station to go pick up a Pokemon and a robot. As we pull up to the train station to pick up the two assumed to be women in our giant black banana as we show it off to them, we must now show for them all the way back to the robot's house. As we approach the robot's house, the Mewtwo tells us she does not like her clothes and that we must go get some new gear. And now our schizophrenic protagonist makes his way to the clothing shop so he can go buy himself a disguise to make himself look more inconspicuous. As our protagonist shops for a disguise to hide his schizophrenia, he also hides his intestinal region as well. Now that our protagonist's metamorphosis is complete and he has successfully gone incognito and hidden his schizophrenia from everyone, he receives a call from the robot to go on a date. But shortly following that call, he gets a call from his imaginary friend who is at the ballpark down the street being beat up by a smurf and a pussy. We approach the ballpark where our imaginary friend is getting his ass whooped right now and we park our banana in a very strange position. We have now reached the scene of the crime, but before we could save our imaginary friend, we must first deal with the Smurf and the pussy. First, we beat the Smurf berries out of the Smurf. Then, it is time for a one-night stand where we beat the pussy up. Now, our psychologically impaired protagonist must help his imaginary friend up. But before we are in the clear, the emo pony makes a return, and we must give chase. We give chase to the emo pony until he reaches a halt, where we give him a taste of our big black banana. After giving the emo pony a taste of our rotten banana, we make our way back to the cab depot so we could drop our imaginary friend off and finally go on the date with the robot. Now that our mentally impaired protagonist has reached the destination of the robot's house with his disguise to hide his schizophrenia, we now go on a date to the bowling alley. We make our way into the bowling alley and start a game of bowling just to quit immediately and leave because we do not want to be beaten by a robot. 
Now our intestinally challenged protagonist drives the robot all the way back to her house just to take off with her car immediately after. We make our way back to the cab depot to be met by the sleeping Mewtwo and the My Little Traumatic Back Injury. Shortly following this, our imaginary friend shows up and gets a phone call and sends us on an epic journey to go pick up a man named Jermaine so we can go try to recover some stolen parts he had hidden in a garage. We pull up to the garage and Jermaine gets out to go check out the open garage that should not be opened. And out of nowhere, here comes the Playtex police to come and arrest us. We immediately take off and evade the tampon police. We successfully evade the tampons and get Jermaine to his destination and make our way back to the cab depot, where we are sent on another mission to go meet somebody who fell asleep at a party and got hairspray sprayed all throughout his hair. We travel to the far, far away land of two blocks away to pick up the man whose hair is covered in hairspray. After taunting the man with the overly sprayed hair, we take him to this meeting destination where he meets with his pimp and we end up having to kill the Buzz Lightyear crew. After successfully taking out the Buzz Lightyear crew and the pimp, we drive the man with the overly sprayed hair to the bar where he goes to celebrate his freedom from being pimped. After dropping Hairspray Boy off at the bar to go celebrate his independence from being pimped, we make our way to a bar of our own, and on the way into the bar, we see a man who is far more challenged than our psychologically impaired protagonist on our way to go meet My Little Back Injury. My Little Back Injury sent us on an adventure to go collect some protection money from a shopkeeper who refuses to pay. We approach the shop and see that it is a Chinese Mew that owes him this money. Chinese Mew refuses to pay up, so we must smash his windows to get him to agree to pay. After successfully smashing his windows, he comes out and agrees to pay. He hands us the money, and we also see that he has a serious eye infection. We make our way back to the bar to give My Little Back Injury his protection money, and we see that My Little Back Injury is magically cured. After handing over the money to magically cured My Little Back Injury, we head outside the bar for two seconds, and then head back inside the bar, where we see a man in a banana suit doing a health inspection on the bar. We make our way back to the table to meet with My Little Back Injury, to see that the oxycodone has worn off and his back problems have returned. My Little Back Injury sends us on a long journey to a block away to go to a laundromat to confront a man who owes him money once again. We enter the laundromat to confront the T-1000 and he throws a basket of laundry at us and runs out the back door and gets in his van and tries to escape. But little did he know, we was trailing right behind him and legally acquired some vehicle that is not ours and chased him off down the road until he finally came to a stop and agreed to pay. We then head back to the bar to go meet with my little back injury so he can walk us to his car where he goes to snort cocaine and tells us about the mission where we have to get on a subway and go meet some guy whose car we must steal for him. After our cocaine briefing, we head to the subway station and get on the train to go meet up with the guy and take his vehicle. We then call my little back injury to tell him that we have the vehicle in our possession, but it is not very clean. He does not like this revelation and tells us to take it to the car wash immediately before we take it to his stash. After successfully stashing the completely legally acquired vehicle that we got for my little back injury, we head back to the bar and meet with him again, where he briefs us about going to chase down a guy named Ivan that we must kill. We exit the bar, and the car that we just stole magically appears out in front of the bar, so we take it for a little joyride to chase down the guy that we must kill. We chase the guy that we must kill down to a construction site, where he climbs the scaffolding and gets up on top of the roof, and we chase after him. And he is very dirty, so we must give him a bloodbath. After giving the dirty man a bloodbath, we call My Little Back Injury to tell him that the job is done, and My Little Back Injury informs us on how his back injury occurred. We do not like this, so we immediately 
go back to the cab depot. We arrive at the cab depot and meet with our imaginary friend, where we then leave and go get in our banana and go straight over to the bar where my little back injury hangs out and confront him about his back injury. My little spinal disfiguration takes off. We give chase and we finally catch up with him and then he meets his doom. Ones, laddie boy. Nobody fucks with my family. <laughs>